Hello, everyone. It's so great to be with each and every one of you today. And it's so amazing to be here in Texas with such an incredible crowd. I cannot believe the line and line of cars stretching down the street, coming to the Capitol. I love it. It's such a great uh, testament to the devotion of the Texans <laughs> to the pro-life movement and to finally achieve our goal in the pro-life movement of reversing Roe versus Wade, of making a abortion illegal and unthinkable all throughout our land. So I'm so honored to be here with you today. Now, I know this week was tough, and there were a lot of people who just seemed to be filled with despair when we talked about the state of our politics, the state of our world, the state of our country. But today, friends, I want to share with you some good news. And that good news is that I believe with all of my heart that we are winning this fight for life. With our army of love, we are winning and momentum is on our side. Momentum is on our side. Just 15 years ago, we launched our, our mission at Students for Life to go and reach these seemingly unorganizable young people who are too busy playing video games and rushing for sororities and fraternities and to ask them to get involved in the most important human right cause of our time. That was 15 years ago. Today, I'm honored to say that we just recently trained our 100,000th student, 100,000th member of the pro-life gen. That we have the honor of serving more than 1,250 students for life groups in all 50 states across the country. But we that momentum doesn't just stop with students for life and the pro-life gen. No, it far surpasses that. In state capitals across our country, we are passing laws that save lives. Poll after poll today, when they are released, those who advocate for the violence of abortion can't simply believe it, that the majority of our country stands with us, the pro-life generation, and rejecting the extreme violence of abortion. The vast majority, over 70% of Americans, agree with us that abortion shouldn't be funded with our taxpayer dollars and that doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers shouldn't be forced to violate their conscience. Abortions are now at a historic low in our country. The number of abortion facilities were, are at a 25-year low. And I think the biggest and the most indicative statistic that we have this momentum, that we are winning despite everything you may see and everything you may read, coming from Washington, D.C., is every year, every January, in Washington, D.C., and state capitals like right here in Austin, we see the pro-life generation rise up. No other cause in the history of the world turns out more people every single year than the American pro-life movement. We've endured pro-life presidents, pro-choice presidents, We've endured setbacks at the Supreme Court. We've endured shocking and disheartening information coming out of our nation's abortion facilities and Planned Parenthoods. But we've never given up. We've never lost hope. We've never given up. Every year at the March for Life, I'm honored to meet pro-life leaders from across the globe who come to the United States. And the one question they ask me every single year is, what are you doing differently? And all I have to do is point to them. Point to these young people who are the pro-life generation, who are courageously rising up, who are willing to sacrifice, who are willing to be made fun of or scorned on social media, who are willing to be called out by their professors to stand up against the violence of abortion. They're the reason, you're the reason, that we have an active pro-life movement that isn't just fighting the battle, but that's winning the battle for life. Now, I know there's a lot we must do in 2021. And I'm sorry if you thought all the bad stuff was going to end in 2020. It's going to carry on. And I know we are at a pivotal moment for our pro-life movement. For in Washington, D.C., we have elected the most extreme presidential administration in the history of the United States. Very soon, 
each and every one of us will be funding abortions with our taxpayer dollars. And we will have a moral obligation to fight that legislation and those laws. And I know coming very soon to a college and high school campus near you, the pro-life movement will be censored. We will be labeled as haters. Our pro-life rhetoric, our events, our pro-life social media posts will be labeled as hate speech. Not for the things we say, not that we're violent, because we abhor violence, because, but because we're telling the truth. Simply because we're telling the truth. So, friends, I'm sorry I can't come to you with great news saying this is going to be easy. Because it's not going to be easy. It's not. But I, I'm not in despair. I have hope. I have great hope for the future of our movement. And I know we're winning. I know we're winning because I can see the desperation of those who advocate for the violence of abortion. We can see them here today in Austin. They fear the day that we know is coming is very near. And that is a reversal of Roe v. Wade that is sending the decision of abortion back to states where the state of Texas will make abortion illegal once again. But we need you. We need each and every one of you to step up, to do more than you've ever done before. Yesterday we mourned. We mourned the more than 62 million pre-born baby girls and pre baby boys that have been taken from us. We've mourned the loss of families, the loss of legacies, the deception and hurt of women across our country. But today, but today we are fighting. We are fighting back. And we have an army of love, an army of love who will stand and speak for every child, no matter their race, no matter what their religion may be, no matter what their sexual orientation may be, no matter what their economic or immigration status may be, no matter what their parentage may be, we will speak for every single child because every single child made in the image of our creator deserves that voice and deserves that advocate and that is who we are friends we are the pro-life generation we are the future of this nation and the future is anti-abortion i'm going to share with you a psalm that was read this week in church in my church the phrase said I did not restrain my lips as you, O oh Lord, know. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Friends, let us do his will. Thank you. <laughs>